Hi. So in April, we released an initial version of Jolt. It is now November, so roughly six months have passed. And we wanted to give an update explaining what we've accomplished during those six months and where we see Jolt going in the coming months and beyond. So a uh, quick context. When we released Jolt back in April, we demonstrated that, you know, if you ignore issues like support for precompiles and GPU integrations, which, you know, are on the Jolt roadmap, but are not yet done, then Jolt was as fast or faster than other RISC-V ZKVMs. And since then, other benchmarks have confirmed that finding. So you might wonder what are the key issues that uh, have prevented Jolt from being used widely already? And I think the main answers are the following. So on initial release, we were missing some basic functionality, such as support for the Rust standard library, which uh, pretty quickly we addressed, and support for the RISC-V M extension, which we've also addressed. So for example, uh, if you run Jolt on applications involving a lot of multiplication operations, it's now an order of magnitude faster than it was back in April. The other major issues for Jolt's wide usability were that on initial release, it had very high verifier costs, so proofs were well into the megabytes and the prover space is high. So as of today, the Jolt prover requires several dozen gigabytes of space to prove that it correctly executed roughly 1 million RISC-V cycles. And as of now, the space usage of the prover grows linearly with the number of cycles proved, right? So if you prove 10 million cycles, it requires 10 times more space to generate the proof than if you prove 1 million cycles. In summary, after we added support for the Rust standard library and the RISC-V M extension, the two major issues were high verifier costs and high space usage for the prover. So in the last six months, most of our efforts and improvements have gone into addressing verifier costs. So we added support for different polynomial commitment schemes, which with much better verifier costs. We also changed how we were uh, kind of batching different grand product arguments. So Jolt proves many different grand products, over a hundred of them. And we are now sort of treating them all as one giant grand product, more or less, which substantially reduces verifier costs further. And we are just finishing up support for different kinds of grand product arguments that have better verifier costs than the one in the initial version of Jolt. So you put all of that together and today Jolt proofs are less than 200 kilobytes in size rather than multiple megabytes. And we will soon be able to go down to as little as a few dozen kilobytes, although that will come at the cost of a slightly slower prover. And to clarify, none of these proof sizes are yet using snark composition or recursion. So these are, you know, 35-ish kilobyte to 200 kilobyte proofs with no recursion needed. Now, a major benefit of achieving these lower verifier costs is it sets us up to address in a very nice and clean way also the prover space usage issue. So because Jolt somewhat uniquely amongst ZKVMs today uses elliptic curve commitment schemes, we have access to very efficient techniques for controlling prover memory usage called folding schemes. And so that is next on the agenda. Once we finish that, I expect that the Jolt prover will use less than two gigabytes of space while retaining its excellent proving time. And at that point, the two major issues that have perhaps been standing in the way of wide usage of Jolt will have been addressed. And I expect and hope for a phase change where Jolt starts seeing quite a bit more usage. We are currently working on adding support for precompiles and GPU acceleration for the prover, as I previously mentioned. And we have known for most of these six months several optimizations available for the prover based on recent research, some of which we've actually done in the last six months. So we are finally getting to a point where we can prioritize implementing those optimizations. They're sort of summarized up here at the top of the screen. I'm hopeful that they will lead to another 2x or more speed up for the prover. So once all of that is done, continuations that is space control for the prover via folding, GPU acceleration, precompile support, you know, getting implemented our uh, known prover speed ups. You know, we hope that Jolt will be sort of the only ZKVM suitable for proving in resource limited environments with, you know, two to four gigabytes of space or less while simultaneously achieving state-of-the-art proving speed. At that point, we will turn to switching from elliptic curve-based commitment schemes to hashing-based commitment schemes like the Binius polynomial commitment scheme. Now, this will make Jolt more complicated, but I expect also significantly faster 
The complications largely come in because commitment schemes like Binius, part of their power is that they work over uh, very nice fields of characteristic two. But working over characteristic two, while great for performance reasons, actually complicates certain things. And I'll be blogging soon about some of those complications and details of them. So that development is further off, but we do hope that that will lead to kind of the fastest version of Jolt. I want to note that there will always be two versions of Jolt, one using elliptic curves and, you know, 256-bit fields, and the other using hashing-based commitment schemes that will probably work over binary fields. Neither one will ever completely dominate the other. My guess is that the curve-based scheme will be the simplest and the smallest space for the prover. And long-term using hashing-based commitment schemes will be the fastest, but might require more space and will also be more complicated, uh, the proof system. Beyond that, we have started significant efforts towards formally verifying the correctness of the Jolt implementation and generally trying to identify and correct all of the bugs that might be in it. This is going to be a years-long effort, not only for Jolt, but for the entire community trying to build and use these EKVMs. They will be buggy and hence not truly securing anything other than perhaps through obscurity. The bugs are there, but they're hard to find. That will be the case for years. And so we have made it a priority to kick off our efforts, you know, the initial steps along the long road to getting some kind of confidence that indeed the entire Jolt implementation is bug free. And, you know, the prover is actually proving the statement that the developer thinks it's proving and so forth. So uh, we'll be releasing some blog posts uh, on those efforts soon, as well as some research papers. And yeah, that is our plans for Jolt in the coming months. The focus will be on folding and elliptic curves. And in the long term, we will turn our focus to hashing-based commitment schemes and trying to get another order of magnitude speed up out of them.